Hello, um, it's February the 13th today. I thought I would just pop on and um, add some footage. I've got um, a current a whip to show you. I'll take I'll take the camera over there, I think, and um, show you that. Um, I've just got it out because I'm going to take it to the Knit and Natter group this afternoon. Um, I've got to go to work at what two today, so. Um, but I thought I would share some of the books that I've been enjoying so far this month. Um, and um, just share, you know, what I'm working on. Um, so I went into um, Bath with I met my mum for a coffee um, last week, and uh, we went to the Persephone shop, um, and I bought Good Evening, Mrs Craven, The Wartime Stories of Molly Panted Downs. Um, and, and they always come with their, their lovely bookmarks go with the um, pages there. Um, so these are wartime stories from 1939 to 44. <laughs> hadn't really heard much about it but I read the back and I just thought yeah I fancy that so um, hopefully I'll be able to make a start on that one. Um, what else have I got? Well, with it being February, I was on the lookout for some sort of romantic books. So I found this one, the Penguin Book of Love Poetry. That one was three pounds. Um, Rob and I are going to have a little um, lunch date. So I think I will take that and read some of those to him in the car. Um, maybe not the smooshy ones, but... <laughs> Um, I like that they're separated into like there's intimations of love. Um, what else have we got? Declarations, persuasions, celebrations, aberrations, separations, reverberations, desolations. Um, so I think that's really fun. So I will enjoy um, reading through that. Probably, I won't read through it all, I'll just pick and choose. Um, and then I, I found these actually in the charity shop, which I was really excited about. They are little um, puffin copies of Miss Pepper Pot books. Okay. And um, Kyra used to love the Mrs. Pepper that's my eldest, she used to love the um, Mrs. Pepper Pop stories when she was little. And I just loved how colourful these editions were. Um, aren't they lovely? So I, I couldn't help myself, I bought these. Um, I'll just put them upstairs with my other vintage children's books. But yeah, I was really <laughs> so happy to find those. Um, and then I also bought uh, a Nina Borden book and I've been working my way through um, the Nina Borden children's books and I've come to the conclusion that she's actually quite dark for a children's writer. She often writes about children that are very um, lonely or um, feel isolated and, and some of the children's books that I've read recently have actually been quite scary. I think had I read them as a young child, um, you know, there are, um, there are topics of abuse um, in there, all sorts of things that you um, probably wouldn't expect young children to enjoy reading about, but I have been enjoying them. But I thought um, it would be interesting to read some of her adult books, which I have never read. And this one was in the same charity shop as the um, Love Poetry. It's called Circles of Deceit. Um, the narrator of this intricate story is a painter who specialises as a copyist. In each of his works, he leaves a subtle clue to his deception. Um, around him, the women he loves alter emotional details, leave signs that he fails to see or sees too late. Um, I don't know, really. It said it was shortlisted for the 1987 Booker Prize. So anyway, I bought it, I thought, you know, it's only a small book, um, 200 pages, so I thought it would be interesting to read some of her adult work and see how that compares to her um, children's stories. 
So um, I've just grabbed that because I, I, I rarely see books by her in the charity shop really. And then the last one I got, bought, um, which I, again, I couldn't help, is a cookbook, but it's called the Jane Austen cookbook. <laughs> it says, um, authentic recipes associated with Jane Austen, now modernised for today's cook. These include buttered prawns, wine roasted gammon, pigeon pie, broiled eggs, white soup, pyramid creams, and Martha's almond cheesecakes. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, but I do have a soft spot for a vintage cookbook. Um, so I thought maybe it would be interesting to just have a read through and see if there's anything I would like to, to experiment with. Um, yeah, so that was it. And then lastly, I have a copy of Barbara Cartland's The Romance of Food, which I just thought would be brilliant for um, February. And it's actually hilarious. It, to read because um, I've never read any Barbara Cartland books um, but I obviously have heard of her. This one was published in 1984 and these are all her favourite recipes um, but she obviously doesn't cook, she has a chef that lives with her so these are all really his recipes but um, and what she does is for each recipe she goes through and she writes a little sort of anecdotes or maybe some historical facts um so uh and it I, I just think it's so funny so like here for breakfast she says for breakfast I eat an egg either boiled poached or scrambled I have three tablespoons of bran this must come from a health store and there are many different sorts the nicest I think honey bran with it I take a small pot of live yogurt and two teaspoons of honey I drink ginseng tea and take my vitamins <laughs> But um, the recipes, I was a bit disappointed actually because the recipes are very kind of, I don't know, I suppose fine dining. Like I'm probably not going to go to a lot of effort to come out with something that looks like this. I mean, that's just not going to satisfy me at all. And actually, that just looks like a tomato stuffed with prawns and a bit of fancy sauce. So I'm sure they are all lovely, but um, I probably won't. But it is really interesting to um, to read through and, you know, here we've got a terrine of fish, you know, I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but um, I just thought, you know, as it was the romance of food, I mean, even this, this is lamb with baby vegetables, but look, I think this kind of fine dining must have been quite popular in the 80s, but it's definitely not going to satisfy me or, or my brood. So, but I have really been enjoying um, all these lovely vintage photos and, and like I said, her anecdotes. But at the back, there were some cake recipes. So I thought, because, look, oh, let me get a look at, the, there she is, Barbara. <laughs> Just, it's brilliant. Um, there's a section on tea and um, she talks about her writing process and I thought this was really funny as well. She says, um, I write in a different way to most authors and in the morning I cope with all my health and fan letters, which are very considerable in number and also articles for different magazines. After I have been for a walk with my dogs in the garden, I have a quick luncheon by myself and at one o'clock I lie on a sofa in my library with my secretary behind me and my dogs at my feet. By half past three, I have dictated six to 7,000 words, which is a chapter for my new novel. Last year, I wrote 23 novels and 25 books in all, breaking my own record. At 3.30, I walk in the garden again, and at four o'clock, nearly every day, I receive journalists, publishers, or television and radio people from all over the world. As I am unable to ask them for luncheon, I have a very English tea to offer them. I just, honestly, I want to be Barbara. <laughs> I just love that. Anyway, there are some lovely cake recipes in here. Um, there's a date and warner cake, that looks nice. Um, honey snap cake, that 
also sounds nice. Um, but I think I might try her chocolate cake just to be on the safe side. Um, it says, um, no, that's not the one actually. Yes, it is. It's the Camfield chocolate cake. And Barbara says, this is a speciality of my house and the most delicious cake I know. Chocolate is one of the most valuable foods we possess. It has the beneficial action with heat and rel relieves high blood pressure because it dilates the blood vessels. It has a toning effect on muscles and the central nervous system and has been called food of the gods and has always been considered by the French an aphrodisiac. Madame de Pompadour, who was a cold woman by nature, tried to put more ardour into her lovemaking with the king by eating truffles and hot chocolate containing vanilla. So there we go. I mean, I can't say no to that, can I? So I think I will try that. It looks, um, honestly, it looks like a fairly standard recipe. It's got some corn flour in there, brown sugar. Um, it's interesting actually how conscious she was of um, her health because um, like for example she says she won't eat white breads or white rice um, so anyway it's you know it's of its time obviously I mean she was writing in the 80s so um, you know but um, I've not been all the way through it but I just thought that was um, a bit of fun um, for you know, Valentine's Day. So I definitely will try um, that cake recipe. Whether or not I get home today, probably not, because like I said, I've got to go to work. But um, yeah, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be fun to try, I think. Um, and that's it really for the um, books that I bought. I've just picked up The Mysterious Case of the Appleton Angels by Janice Hallett. Um, I started it and I actually, I, I was really surprised. I don't know why I'd not really read anything about her her writing but it's all in the form of text messages, whatsapp messages, emails um, so it kind of looks like this um, the whole way through the whole way through and I was sort of reading through it and I got through the first sort of hundred pages really quickly and I thought oh gosh this is like an introduction but it's not the whole book is like that so it will be interesting to see how easily I I can sort of get involved with the story. I mean, at the moment, I can already see that it's, it is driving the plot forward quite quickly, but um, I still don't really know much about the characters, but I mean, I'm, I'm only 100 pages in. So it's a very fast read so far, like I flew through those first 100 pages. So um, yeah, I'm really enjoying that so far. And I was, like I said, I was quite surprised, but I've just sort of had a read and her other two books are very similar, uh, like a similar format as well. So um, I've not read a book like it. So um, yeah, I was really interested to, to read more about that. But um, so far, so good. So I'll let you know, um, well, probably on the podcast, how I've got on with that. But I don't think it will take long to, to finish at all. I mean, it's, it's a good 400 pages. But like I said, it's all written in the form of those sort of messages. So um yeah, I don't think that will take very long at all. Um, and that's about it for um, book talk. I I will take you over to show you the project that I'm working on. Let's go and have a look. So I am currently making these teeny tiny little squares. They're scraps of scraps. They are scraps of um, from my scrappy blanket um, that I've been working on for well over a year. But um, so I've made a load of different colours and um, I've got more over here. And then what I've done is I've just popped um, at the moment. I, I mean, I've made everything I need, I think, for the project. And then I'm going to um, just finish sewing the ends off in um, in knitting matter today. Uh, finished sewing all those ends. I've got them on one of these, um, I don't know what they are, pins, um, just to keep them all together. And then um, I'm going to try and put them all together to make a little, a miniature patchwork piece. Um, so I think because it's February, I'm going to um, maybe try and do a, um, a heart. So maybe I'll need to make some little half, um, 
half squares as well. Probably. But they're so cute and um, they're so tiny. Um, so yeah, I've been having um, really good fun. I actually had counted them all out. Um, so I've sort of designed something on some, some paper and then I think maybe I'll do some little half ones as well. Um, and then I think because they're so small, I think I'm going to stitch them together with, well, maybe some of this yarn. Maybe I'll just pick one colour and go with it. Or I was thinking just a normal needle and thread. So I'll try a couple of methods, I think, um, and see, see how I get on. But they're lovely, aren't they? Um, they look so great. I just want to keep playing with them. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's that's where I am at the moment. Um, so I'm just putting them all in my bag so that I can take them all with me and just to finish sewing those ends in. Um, and then I'll, I'll let you know how I get on. So I think I've got all the ingredients for the um, the chocolate cake recipe that I wanted to try. Um, flour, vanilla extract, chocolate, chocolate powder, cocoa, um, eggs, butter, uh, caster sugar, corn flour, and then it says brown sugar. Um, I've got dark or soft light. Um, I would normally bake with the light brown in a cake, but it just says brown um, and it's also mixed with caster sugar. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it does need dark brown. Um, what, what would that do to the cake? Um, make it darker, richer, maybe, maybe more moist because it's got more molasses, hasn't it? Um, dark brown sugar. Um, I'm not sure really what to do. I might, I might just use a combination of both. Maybe I'll just use 100 grams of each. Um, because it's only three tablespoons of caster sugar, so it's not actually that much, uh, you know, of the white sugar. We'll try it. Um, so I'm just going to get started. recipe says to put it into three 15 centimeter tins. I only have two 20 centimeters, so that's what I'm gonna go with. So I'm just making the filling, um, butter, cream, and dark chocolate. Probably could have done it in the microwave. So I just have to let this melt and then uh, I think whisk in the icing sugar. 
So this is the consistency of the icing. Um, it called for, I think, 500 grams of icing sugar on top of the cream and butter and chocolate. Um, and I didn't have that. I, I thought I had a full box, but I only had 250. So 250 grams. So I've mixed in what I've got, but it's quite rich. It's almost like a ganache. Um, I mean, it's nice, but really rich. I think what I might do is I have some cherry conserve. I might add that, a layer of that. So I've got this cherry conserve that I usually use for um, like yogurt, natural yogurt. So I think maybe I'll pop a layer of the chocolate filling and then um, some of this dotted around just to sort of stop it being so rich. And it'll be sort of a black, black forest flavor then. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna try. Actually, it's Sunday. Um, let me have a look. Sunday, the twenty sixth, February. We've just got back from a walk. Um, we just stayed local today, um, so I thought I would just catch you up on the last. I can't remember when I last filmed. I think it was. I think I was making a cake, wasn't I, from the Barbara Cartland book. That was really nice and actually I meant to come back and show it the next day because it was really dark but it just didn't last very long at all. Um, it was lovely. I really liked the cherries in it um, because it was quite rich. Um, it's not one of the best chocolate cakes I've ever had. It was nice, really nice but um, it was kind of faffy. It was one of those ones where you whisked the egg whites and folded it in separately and I guess maybe because it was from the 80s um, I guess some of the sort of processes were a bit long-winded. I followed as exact as I could. Um, but yeah, it was a lovely cake, so um, it didn't last long. <laughs> I keep looking, I keep, if I keep looking off to the side, it's just because I'm making sure that the camera's focusing on me and not the head in the background. Um, I put a fan in it, and um, Lulu said it looked like Medusa, but all I can see is... Um, Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, where was I? So I thought I would just update you. I have not finished the patchwork part, but I did buy some. I thought, how am I going to fill it after a while? I thought, how am I going to stuff it? Because the stuffing will just poke out, even though the holes are very small. I was worried that the stuffing might come out. And then I thought, well, I'll just attached two sides together. In the end, I went and bought um, a piece of wadding. So I think that will work. And while I was out, I also picked up some yarn for a new project. Um, I just really wanted, I've got this jumper here. Okay, look, isn't that lovely? It's hand knit. Um, and I bought it from a car boot sale last summer and pushed it away. Um, it's lovely. It's, you know, it's, it's been homemade and I paid like, I think about three pounds for it. Um, and I've just really, really loved wearing it. So I thought about maybe doing a um, crocheting a cardigan in a similar sort of fabric. And then like with a red trim for some reason, that was really taking my fancy. But um, 
the tweed yarn I usually use, I didn't, I didn't have enough of. So I went to the local yarn shop. They didn't have anything either. So I just bought a massive ball of the cream, um, some cream Aran. That's just the James Brett one. It's 20% um, wool, I think. And then um, I really wanted to do a bright red contrast just around maybe the cuffs um, and maybe the collar, but I feel like those two together now might be a bit too Christmassy. I think that will work well with the tweed. If I find a tweed, um, I will use, I will do something with that. Um, but I did see this, this is um, Rico Creative Soft Will Aaron, and this is a much softer colour, so it's not red, it's more, in fact it's coming up on the camera, more vibrant, it's kind of a muted So maybe those two together will work. So I just, and I've got them in my Liberty bag. So I'm going to go and have a play. I've got them. Um, we went to, we also went to, um, look at that toe, isn't that lovely? Love it. We went to um, London in the half term. We went to the Tate Modern um, and just went up and had lunch. I don't know, did I? No, I wouldn't have spoken about it because it was after. Um, yes, we went up. We did the Tate, um, that was lovely, Lulu really enjoyed that, and then we went and had some, some dinner, and then we had a quick walk around. We didn't have a lot of time, um, I think we were there for about six, seven hours, um, um, but we quickly walked through Liberty, <laughs> and so um, we didn't buy anything. I, I saw these Tate bags, I loved them. Actually, I wanted the other print, but it had short handles, and Rob quite rightly pointed out that I probably would not use it. Um, unless it had a longer handle so uh, really nice it's got a little um popper on it as well so you can kind of close it isn't that just so pretty so i bought that um, i didn't buy anything else although lulu and i did treat ourselves to some very let me have they're here they're, they're still down here some very bougie chocolates she picked english rose and violet creams um, i don't know if there's any in there we've been Oh yeah, there are a few. We've been eating like one or two every evening. Um, she says we feel, it feels like we're in. She says it feels like we're in Matilda, <laughs> you know. And then I bought these mostly for the box. Um, these are the Chabonel and Walker milk sea salt caramel truffles. Oh gosh, and they are so lovely. But look at that lovely box. So beautiful. I'm guessing that's like a Liberty print. I don't think, have I got any left? Oh, I've got a couple. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a really lovely day out, actually. I um, don't know if I've got any footage of it. I didn't really film much. I think um, there may be some footage. Um, if so, I'll, I'll pop it up, maybe um, from along the Thames. I think I took some film. And then um, there might be some, oh, that's in the gallery. I'll have a look. What else? Um, while I was out getting wool the other day, I stopped in the charity shop, of course, um, and I didn't buy it very much. Um, I just bought this book. Bon, this is the Bon Mama, the seasonal cookbook. And it was funny because I used the cherry um compost in that cake so I thought isn't it funny how suddenly you're I, I guess you become attuned to certain things um and I was thinking about other things I could use that for and this isn't quite an old book I think it's from 2011 but it has lots of little things you can do like obviously with the leftover jars and then it's got recipes and um it's separated into spring summer autumn and winter recipes um, and most of them they seem like really nice recipes but they're just you know you need like a spoonful of um, cherry compote or a spoonful of the apricot conserve um, so I think that's quite nice if because if you do have those because sometimes ours go off quite quickly because I'm I'm the only one that really eats them sometimes Lulu will have like um we like their blueberry and their blackberry jams um, so sometimes she'll eat some but really usually it's only me so um 
yeah, that might be quite nice to try and use up some of those um, gems and concerts. And then the only other book I bought, which is one I wanted to read, is um, Anne Tyler, Redhead by the Side of the Road. Um, this is a book that's been recommended to me lots and lots of times. It's a really small one. We do have a copy in the library, but it's, it's usually, um, it goes out quite well. Um, so it was long listed for the Booker Prize in 2020. Um, I have read another of Anne Tyler's books. I think it was a spool of Blue Thread. Um, I enjoyed her writing. However, I, I found that that book was very slow and it was very big and very slow. Whereas um, I've heard really good things about this one. So um, it was a pound. So I thought, well, I'll get it and, um, you know, I can donate it or pass it on. And then the other book that I have read recently, I absolutely flew through. Um, Rob and I went and had a walk um, over at Stourhead. Was it last weekend? Um, might have been last weekend, which is a National Trust property. Um, I really wanted to go somewhere and have a look at the snowdrops. So we walked, um, had a, a good walk around. Um, it was beautiful. I definitely filmed some footage, so I will pop that at the end. Um, and like most National Trust properties, they have a bookshop. So we stopped off after we'd done a, a lovely long walk and we stopped off and we had um, coffee and a cake in the pub and um, I had a meet around the National Trust bookshop. I didn't buy, I think, did I buy anything else? I don't think so. Or maybe I bought a children's book actually. But um, I, I saw this. So it was a Bar Barbara Commons book and it's called Mr Fox. Now, I bought, I showed it in um, a vlog, maybe in the summer, I can't remember, but I found a pack of three of those vintage um, Barbara Commons books that have been reissued, and uh, I think what attracted me to them was one of the titles was something like We Bought Our Spoons from Woolworths, and um, so and they were a pound for the three books, so I've grabbed them and I've not got around to reading them. Anyway, I recognised the um, the author's name. It was just, you know, it was kind of like a grubby little thing, just just there. Um, but I also really loved this um, this cover. It's a very sort of 80s cover, which I thought was great. Anyway, it's set in the, um, just before the Second World War. Um, so when I read the back, it says, um, Mr. Fox is a dealer in second-hand cars and black market food, a man skilled in bending the law. When Caroline Seymour and her young daughter, Jenny, are deserted at the beginning of World War II, he offers them a roof over their heads, advice on ev evading creditors and a shared, if dubious, future. So I just thought, you know, I love books set around the, the Second World War. So I thought, well, I'll just grab it. Look, it's a pound. It goes to support the National Trust. So I don't know why I'm, I'm dithering. I think because I'm trying to be really careful about books I bring into the house at the moment because we are running um, short of space. Anyway, it's about a, um, it's about a 30, 40 minute drive home. So while we're in the car, I just, you know, it's only a short book. It's um, 200 odd pages. I just started reading it and by the time I'd got home I was hooked, I couldn't put it down and I read it in like two days. I absolutely adored it. Um, she writes so well, she's got a very dry kind of wit that I really appreciate, she's kind of straight talking. Um, I, I just loved it. I, I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed her writing style. And I don't know if that's just this book. I loved the characters. I loved how down to earth they were. Um, and reading more about her, it seems like a lot of her books are kind of semi-autobiographical. Um, she um, did, Barbara Com Commons did live with a uh, a used car dealer for an, a number of years and she was in London around that time so it's quite interesting really I don't know how much of it is based on on her real her real life but um yeah I really really recommend that if you like um books around the, the war um and you like something with a bit of a wicked humor um I just I love it I love that she's not snobby but she she just knows what she likes um yeah, yes, and she just loves London and where she lives, um, and they move sort of out of London throughout ver um, various periods of the war. Um, it's just really interesting, really. Um, 
and you know what they sort of have to do to survive and how she sort of um i suppose balances that in her mind so it's a really lovely book really really lovely um i thought it was quite funny in places a little bit sad in others um yeah i just really like like I just really loved it. So I think I had a look upstairs and I've got those three books and I also have this Barbara Commons book, um, which is one of the um, Brage modern classics, Who Was Changed and Who Was Dead. So I don't know how many books she wrote. So I've got four books now of hers to, um, to look forward to and none of them are very big. So I'm really looking forward to um, reading more of her, her work because that was just like a little gem. I loved it. So unexpected. Um, and I actually was, I'm in the middle of reading something else. So um, it's, I sort of put that on the back burner. So yes, that is what I've been reading. So I think, I think that's all I have to update you on really. I hope you've had a lovely February. Um, spring is nearly here. When we were out walking, we saw the crocus starting to come up, all the lovely purple um, although it's feeling very cold here this weekend, it's been very, very cold, so I've um, not wanted to go out too much really. But yes, I think I'm going to end the vlog there. I will um, hopefully film a podcast next week if I get things done, if I get some time to work on some of my projects, I will definitely film and update you on those and hopefully have something to share. So um, I will see you all again soon. Um, and Take care.